Hey, I'm so glad you came back and I hope you are having the best week ever. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I'm having a wonderful week and I'm totally stoked about today's video where I share a few DIYs made with budget friendly items from the Dollar Tree or things you may already have laying around the house. I'm pretty excited about today's video. I hope you are too. So let's just go ahead and get started. For my first DIY, I'm using this sign from the Dollar Tree. I just cut the little ribbon off and then the back side will be my front side. Taking chalk paint, I paint all over the sign. I do one good thick layer. I love using chalk paint because it dries super fast. Now these I cut out and I print them off. They're free, free printables. I have that linked in the description. I printed mine in black and white. You could do the pink if you wanted to. I made this kitchen chart sign and I actually figured out a way so I can link my image. So if you wanted to download it, you can, and that will be linked in the description too. I'm actually really excited about that. So like I said, I cut these out and when I started to lay them out on the sign, then I realized that they won't all fit, but that's okay. The little candy thermometer thing, I don't really ever use that in the kitchen anyways. Matte Mod Podge all over the sign and then on top of the little cutout printable things, smoothing out the bubbles. I find it easiest to use a flat head brush and then dip it in water to get the bubbles out. Then just taking a regular pencil, trace around the sign. It doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, I'm going for a smudged, imperfect, um, weathered look. I don't have the words for it, but it's not gonna be perfect. After that's finished, black paint, tracing over where I traced around with a pencil. And this isn't perfect either. In fact, I'm kind of dry brushing and I want it to be sort of smudgy, messy. Once again, I do not have the words. And if you mess up, don't freak out. Just take a damp little cloth, wipe it away. You know, it's super easy. Then taking the same little brush, I dry brush all over the sign. If you notice, there's no dipping in paint. So I'm just using the paint that was left on the brush and kind of smudging it all over using my finger to smear it. This is like no fail. And I really like the way this turned out. Here it is up close. I just want to show you that I don't want you to be intimidated. If you're not like an artist or you don't have a steady hand, you can still do this DIY. And that's why I love Farmhouse because it doesn't have to be perfect. One more layer of Mod Podge on top of everything because I'm putting this in my kitchen and if something gets splashed on there, I wanna be able to wipe it off with a damp cloth. I love the way this looks. If you've ever seen any of my home tours, you know my kitchen is bare. People comment on it all the time. Not in a mean way, just saying like, dang, your countertops are bare. I wanna decorate in there, but I want it to be functional and cute. And I think this does the job. I really do love this. For my next DIY, I'm using some ornaments that I won't be using ever again. The green one I was actually gonna do a DIY with around Christmas time, but never finished it. Some of my children's balls they will not be playing with. And also some plastic grocery bags that I scrunch up and make into my own little ball. Um, I also use some duct tape to hold the plastic bag balls together. Anyways, moss from the Dollar Tree, moss from Walmart, and then also some more brown moss from the Dollar Tree. I just wanted three different types of moss. No matter which moss I'm using, I cut it up really, really good because this makes it last longer and I think it's easier to like put onto the balls using hot glue. I just roll the ball around. No matter what type of ball I use, toy ball, plastic ball ornament, this is the technique I use to put the moss onto the balls. I feel like doing it this way was a lot easier than trying to pat the moss on there. And I did every ball a little bit different, but the same sort of like some I mixed up the colors of moss, some I used twine, some I used rope. One of the balls I got a little crazy and I pulled apart a piece of rope because I didn't want it as thin as twine and I didn't want the string as thick as rope either. Anyways, I wrapped it around in a spiral type look starting in the middle. I had to use a lot of hot glue towards the end where the spiral started to close in. And then I go back with hot glue in between the rope, but I still do the same thing with dabbing the ball onto the tray to get the moss on the ball. Now I did try this with doing the moss first and that didn't work out so well. Anyways, 
I love the way that this one turned out. It was just a lot of work, so I only did one like this. I made about 13 moss balls total using trash, old ornaments, whatever. I did make one a little bit different. I used two bags of the Dollar Tree moss balls, cut them in half, glued them onto an ornament, and then in between I added some additional moss, and I like the way this one turned out. Once again, this one was time consuming and kind of expensive. So if you're looking for something fast and easy, I would suggest just doing regular moss balls, maybe wrapping them in twine, whatever. Super budget friendly DIY. If you had to buy like styrofoam balls for this, it wouldn't be as budget friendly in my mind, but with the stuff I had on hand, totally worth it to me. Now I got this tray at Goodwill for $2. I've been wanting a dough bowl forever. This isn't quite it, but I like the way this looked anyways. I really liked it wood as well, but because I'm putting it on top of a wood console, I did use like chalk paint to dry brush it all over. And I went back and sanded it just a little bit to kind of give a little bit more dimension. Now, I don't even know what this tray is. Is this a dough bowl? I don't know, tell me, let me know, please. I'm sure somebody will correct me. Anyways, here it is on top of my TV console. I'm using this to help disguise and hide my TV wires not totally hiding them but it helps kind of disguise them or takes the attention off of them anyways i like the way moss balls and a dough bowl look next i'm using a 20 inch hula hoop from the dollar tree that's the smallest size hula hoop dark wood grain contact paper also from the dollar tree and i just cut two strips of the contact paper out and then wrap it around the hula hoop I thought about using craft paper, but I didn't realize I was out of craft paper. Anyways, it's not going to look perfect. It's going to look like this, messy, but it doesn't matter. I just want to hide the pink polka dots. One bundle of $5 fern from Walmart. You get a lot for $5. Buying this style of fern was a lot cheaper than buying like seven, eight, or nine, ten bundles from Dollar Tree. And the leaves are longer too. Anyways, hot gluing all the way around the rim of the hula hoop. And one layer looks about like this, and you can also see I have a lot of fern left over. I went back and did a second layer, and the second time I hot glued the fern around, I tried to tuck the ends of the fern under the hoop to try to hide my hoop form. So after two times, it looks like this, and I still have some fern left over. So that's how much you get from Walmart. Now I bought six of these 97 cent picks from Walmart, the eucalyptus and I cut three of the stems off and left three of the stems on the pick. Then I just went around and added my eucalyptus all over the wreath and fluffed it as I went until I came back around to the end or till I finished with all of the picks. And then I went back and hot glued them once I had them fluffed or moved around in place, how I knew for a fact I wanted them. Now, I don't know about you, but when I'm making wreaths, as I'm making it, I have to like hang it on the wall and then step back to make sure I'm liking the way it looks. And I love the way this looks so far. Like, I think it's cute as is, but my inspiration pieces had like a lot more of dimension and different colors of picks. So I did buy one more 97 cent pick fern from Walmart again. And I just kind of added that one randomly to the same way I did the eucalyptus. Just put it in place. When I decided that's where I want it, I glued it down. And here's how I'm gonna hang it. Just any string, I'm using twine, hot glued it to the back. And I also wanna show you how ugly the back will be. So like, don't flip out if you're making this. The, the back is supposed to be ugly. It does not matter. And I also want to show you that you cannot see the hoop from the side. So I have my face like as flat to the wall as I can get it while still filming. And you cannot see the hoop because this has such a low profile. This is great for my dining room when there's not a much move room to begin with. And here's what it looks like in my dining room. I put it on a pallet wall I made with leftover flooring. I get a lot of questions on that. I never made a DIY. I just used leftover flooring we had and then put this pallet wall together and I'll hang a wreath on here for the seasons. Love the way this turns out. You know me, if you've watched my channel, I love wreaths. Please let me know what you think about this wreath because I almost added white flowers into it but then changed my mind against it. Anyways, I hope 
you're having a great week, like I said, and I will see you this weekend when I upload my home tour. Thank you so much for watching.